I am Jonathan Kaplan. I'm a board certified plastic surgeon in San Francisco. I moved from Louisiana to San Francisco seven years ago with my wife. I took over a practice in a medical office building that had seven other plastic surgeons. So I moved from Baton Rouge, where there were seven plastic surgeons, to a building where there were seven plastic surgeons. So when I got here, I realized that I had my work cut out for me. It was going to be a competitive environment. And I was the new kid on the block. But there were two things that I realized right off the bat that were going to make the difference for me. And seven years later, they really have made the difference for me. The first was that lead generation was paramount. I know people talk to you about, you know, getting a lot of traffic to your website and always traffic, traffic, traffic. But traffic only generates clicks and you cannot follow a click. So I knew that was not going to be adequate for me. So I needed something that was going to get people not only to my website, but be willing to provide me with their contact information. I needed leads. I needed to build my email database. And the thing that I realized that was going to generate those leads for me was the right call to action button. And it's very obvious to me now. It may not still not be obvious to a lot of people, but the right call to action button, which I'm going to ref uh, review in a second, it's just so obvious. Um, right now, what a lot of you are doing with your sales funnel is you've got some call to action buttons on your website. You know, the things that people click on to provide their contact information in exchange for something else, uh, some information that you may be able to provide to them. And right now, those call to action buttons are book online, uh, get an online consult, chat now, chat now is really popular, uh, and you know things like that, or download my ebook. Everybody uh, thinks that everybody wants to see their, their ebook or read their ebook, but the truth is that they can see all that information online without downloading your ebook. But regardless, these types of call to action buttons, they're further down your sales funnel. So you are gonna get people, but they're gonna be the ones closer down towards the bottom of the funnel. What about everybody else in your sales funnel? You don't wanna ignore those people. You wanna get the people that are just starting their research process. Now, maybe they're not gonna come in, but they are interested and they are going to go to someone. So they might as well come to you first. And so hopefully they'll be able to find you before your competition and they'll provide you with their contact information before they provide it with their, provide it to your, uh, your competitors. And so I had to figure out what was gonna be the call to action button that captured everybody from the very top of the sales funnel to the bottom of the sales funnel. And the thing that I quickly realized was that everybody wants to know cost and the call to action button to end all call to action buttons, the call to action button that's gonna get everybody that wants to know pricing is get a quote now. So call to action button that is on the homepage of your website, desktop and mobile up at the top of the page, that's gonna get as many people in your sales funnel as possible. And I know a lot of people are, are down on that. They'll think, oh, well, they're, they're, they're price shoppers. They're not necessarily price shoppers. It's not unreasonable for a person to wanna know how much this is gonna cost me. It's just, it's just not unreasonable. Because before we go to a dealership to look at a car, we want to know how much it costs. Before we go to an open house, we want to know how much the house costs. Not unreasonable for somebody to want to know how much that cosmetic procedure is going to be. Or if it's a non-cosmetic procedure, because we work with a lot of surgery centers as well, that they are they have an out-of-pocket uh, deductible. They're going to have to be paying for this medically necessary procedure possibly. And they want to know how much that that is going to be ahead of time. So a get a quote now call to action button is going to get everybody, it's, well, it's going to get more people in your sales funnel than any other call to action button. So let me show you how I do this on my website in uh, San Francisco, Pacific Heights Plastic Surgery. I've got a very COVID friendly uh, homepage of my website now encouraging people to book online and do a virtual consult. But anyway, just take a look at this video and it just shows how the consumers, they can book online now, they can check pricing. We have this very obvious get a quote now button in the top right hand uh, of the screen and they get to the price estimator that's embedded into our website they can choose from different categories like breast they can choose from the different types of breast procedures they add that to their wish list and then they're looking for the price but they're not going to see the price right up front first you're going to have to decide how soon they're looking to get this done so we can help stratify how the priorities of who we're going to call back to follow up on these leads and then the price, they have to create an account first, put in all their demographic information, and then the price appears on the, on the screen. And they see that price, they see that it's an estimate, we make it very clear that it's an estimate. And then they also can see that they can apply for financing down at the bottom. Now this is one thing that people always tell you is that, you know, it'd be better if you had patients coming in that were pre-approved for financing, but how are they gonna be pre-approved for the right amount of financing if you don't tell them how much it costs ahead of time? And so that's one of the beautiful things here is that they can see that estimate for, in this case, a breast dog, and then you get financing for $7,050 in this example. 
And you may be thinking, well, what if they really need a breast aug and lift? Fair enough. Either way, even if the person chooses the wrong procedure for themselves, at least you get their contact information. But more importantly, now this person is going to apply for financing and they're going to be $7,050 closer to the right procedure than if they just came in for a consultation and what weren't approved for anything because they didn't know the price ahead of time. So after they uh, submit their wish list, they see the pricing estimate on the screen. They can apply for financing. It's specifically for your practice when they apply for financing through care credit. At the same time, an email is generated that's sent to both the patient and to your front office staff. And you can see here in that email, we see that the patient's interested as soon as possible. We see their name. The patient sees a breakdown of the estimated cost. And this is really important here because rather than you just saying to the patient, oh, it's $7,050, at least now they can see the breakdown. They can see that you're not pocketing all that, that, you know, that some of that's going to the implants, some of that's going to the OR and anesthesia fees. So this is really kind of taking price transparency to another level where they can actually see where the, the constituent costs are going. And then also in this email, you see the patient's email address and the patient's phone number. So you're generating a lead passively just by people checking pricing. Whereas if they were calling your office, one, they'd be taking up all your office staff's time asking about pricing. And maybe if you gave them the price over the phone, then they would just hang up right after that and you got nothing out of it. The other alternative that a lot of doctors will do is they'll say, oh, well, you got to come in for a consultation before we can give you the pricing, which just aggravates the hell out of them. So this is a great way to save your office staff a ton of time and automate the lead generation process and the, also the uh, pricing and quote process. If you want to read more about my opinion and my view on price transparency and sales funnels, you can check that all out on the Doximity. Just Google Doximity price transparency. I'll come up. And then the other article that you can look at that is open source. This is an article that was published in a peer-reviewed journal. Price Transparency in the Online Age was published in Annals of Plastic Surgery, May of 2016. And we went, uh, followed my practice for a year, collected a lot of data. And one of, there's a lot of data in this article, but the one main art, uh, point that I'll bring up is that when you see patients coming in that are price aware, that know the price ahead of time before the consultation, that those patients are 41% more likely to book a procedure than non-price aware patients. So this is just really great for you to be able to save a lot of time on consults, avoiding consults that are going to go nowhere because the patient doesn't realize the cost of it. And it's going to avoid a lot of patients experiencing sticker shock. So really worthwhile to provide pricing information ahead of time. And don't just list your prices as a static menu on your website because then you have no idea who's looking at it. And I'm going to bring that up a little bit later on uh, the, the fact that you know, a lot of doctors have these online stores where they just list the pricing of their products. And you're just missing out on leads there too, which I'm going to get into in just a second. Anyway, I want to be very clear. I, I hope you come out of this webinar with lots of interesting points, a lot of actionable ideas, but I also want to make sure you hear this one point that I want to be very clear that just because you're providing pricing information on your website in the way that I'm showing you, that I am not trying to compete on price. Because by the time the patient's already provided me with their contact information and gotten the price, there is no guarantee that I'm the lowest person. I don't have to be the cheapest in town to do this. I'm capturing their contact information before they know that what the price is. So I'm not trying to compete on price. I am just using price as the carrot to get your social media followers and web traffic into your pipeline. Same way you're trying to use your ebook that nobody really wants to read into your, your pipeline. Everybody wants to know pricing. Doesn't make them a bad person. You're just using that to get them into your pipeline, get their contact information, add them to your email database. And in the process, all, I have all, I've been here seven years now. I've got almost 10,000 e active emails in my email database now, almost 10,000 active emails. It's like really amazing that I've been able to collect that many. And it's all because of this call to action button because everybody wants to know price. Now let's look at the current state of affairs that we're pretty much all in right now. Our revenue is down. Maybe we're offering virtual consults. Maybe we're selling skincare online. Maybe we've got some recurring revenue from subscriptions and memberships, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but regardless, cash flow isn't great. So is this really the time you want to be trying to market to people? I mean, think about the marketing. First off, it's expensive. But if you've got an email database of people that are checking pricing on your website, you know that they are interested in cosmetic surgery that you, or whatever your practice, if it's a surgery center, you know that they're interested in the services you provide, bottom line. And an email database with the right demographic, it is better than Facebook advertising. And let me explain why, aside from the cost. But if you've ever done any Facebook advertising, 
What you quickly realize is that when you're trying to target your demographic, you know, you target around your city in 10 mile radius or whatever, but then you start looking at the different uh, categories that you can look at uh, for uh, targeting on Facebook. And so for cosmetic practice, you're probably looking at people that are interested in health and wellness and fitness, for example. But of all Facebook's might, of all the data that they're selling to the Russians, they can't tell you if somebody's actually inter interested in cosmetic surgery. It's crazy. So what you're doing is you're spending money on targeting people that are approximately your target audience. Sure, maybe there's some uh, overlap in that Venn diagram between people that are inter interested in health and wellness versus cosmetic surgery. But I'll be damned if I'm spending money on approximately targeting my the right audience. Whereas if I've got my email database, I know they're all my target audience. And Google AdWords, super expensive. Print advertising, who, who even knows what that is anymore? And then social media advertising like Instagram. I mean, I'm not saying don't ever do any of it, but you just can't target it the way your demographic of your email database is going to be able to target. It's, it's way better with email marketing. And the way I do my email mar marketing, I do a monthly email newsletter. It's got a 20% open rate, which means 20% of the people open it, which is really good. It's, a, it's good for, as far as the industry standard. And 10% of the people that open it actually click on something in my email newsletter, something to bring them back to my website, maybe check pricing again. Great way to generate new leads and re-engage current and former patients. So if you've ever heard of the Aesop's fable, the ant and the grasshopper, the idea was that the ant spent all summer building up uh, reserves to be prepared for the winter. And the ant was prepared. The grasshopper, as the fable says, sang away the summer. And when the winter came, the uh, grasshopper was SOL. I although I don't think that's the term that Aesop uh, used in the fable. But anyway, if you focus on lead generation during the good times, and you'll be, you're going to be better prepared for the tough times, which we're in, because right now is the absolute worst time to be spending money on advertising. Whereas if you have an email newsletter with uh, your target demographic in there, which you will, because if it's your email database, they will be the people that you're looking for, then it's really the most cost-effective form of marketing. It allows you to own your marketing. And a huge email database, I'm not going to say it makes you pandemic-proof, but it definitely makes you pandemic resistant because rather than me spending money on marketing, I'm sending out email newsletters during this pandemic. I'm not sending out emails saying like, hey, we got a pandemic special, nothing like that. Uh, but I'm sending out emails about like, you know, what we're going to be doing when we reopen. I've been sending out some articles that I've written, some blog posts. I've been able to stay in touch with my audience, my, my patients or future patients or anybody that's ever submitted a wish list to check pricing. I'm staying in touch with those people and it's costing me so little as far as email marketing goes. So what I've done so far is I've talked about the price estimator that you can embed into your existing website with the Build My Bot platform to generate leads. But I want to talk about two other ways that you can also generate leads that people often overlook. First, I'm going to talk about our uh, subscriptions and membership service where you can have consumers, you know, sign on to memberships or subscriptions, get recurring revenue. I'm going to go over that in just a second. And also talk about how you can actually have people purchasing online through your price estimator. So that price estimator that I was demonstrating on my website, sure, the consumer can check pricing in exchange for their contact information. But it makes sense that if you have non-surgical service like skincare products or Botox fillers and any kind of injectables, microneedling, whatever, that they can actually also buy those services through the price estimator. So you basically have an e-commerce platform overnight by embedding the price estimator in your website. But it's not just about the ability to purchase through your website, because a lot of you have online stores right now. But I'm going to show you something that you realize you've been missing out big time, big time in the past with your online store. So let's get into it. First, bear with me. I just want to go over subscriptions and memberships so we're all using the same language. And I'll circle back and you'll see how this is germane to the conversation. When I'm talking about subscriptions, we're talking about period periodic charges over time to cover the cost of a service. So for example, if we're doing, uh, if a patient's getting paying $300 every three months for 20 units of Botox, that's every quarter, that's $1,200 per year. So you can make them pay that $300 every time they come in, or you can just have their credit card on file and charge them automatically, not manually, automatically, every month charge them 100 bucks, and that covers the cost of the Botox. And every three months they come in and they get their Botox, and it feels like it's free because they're not paying for it right then because they've been spreading out that cost. That's a subscription. You can also incentivize the patient, give maybe a 15, 20% discount on that monthly charge. So instead of $100 a month, maybe it's 80 or $85. The point being is that yes, maybe you're getting a little less, 
but you're getting that recurring revenue and you're ensuring that patient's coming in every quarter. And even if they don't remember to come in every quarter, you're at least getting recurring revenue every month. So that's the benefit of subscriptions. The BillMobot platform, we handle those automated charges through the price estimator to charge that consumer. So we compare that to memberships. These are periodic charges that don't really cover the cost of any of the services, but it just gives them access to additional discounts. So instead of running a one-off special where you never hear from the person again, like a Groupon, this requires a little bit of investment on the part of the consumer uh, for them to get that VIP pricing. So it's, for us, it's like $25 a month for our particular membership in my practice, and that gives them 15, 20% discounts on Botox and Latisse and things like that. So it just kind of keeps a loyal patient and again, recurring revenue. So compare that to everybody else that does subscriptions and everybody else that has an online store. What do they do on this, the website on the left? That uh, doctor is showing their price for a monthly, excuse me, for an annual membership. It's $169 a year. Okay, so somebody's on your website, they see $169 a year. If they buy it, great, then you find out who that person is. Uh, if you look at the right, this is typical online store, it shows the skincare products, shows the price. If somebody buys it, great. But if they don't buy any of these things, you really get nothing out of it. Now, compare that to the price estimator, where again, aside from people being able to check pricing for a procedure they might be interested in, people can also use the price estimator to purchase things. They can purchase a membership, they can purchase a subscription, they can purchase skincare products, they can purchase injectables. So take a look at this example here. Here's the same price estimator on my website that I showed you. This is, in this particular example, it's a membership that they can log, that they can subscribe to and pay for. Um, but if even if it's not a membership, just think of this as anything they can purchase, skincare, injectables, anything. I just want to, want to make the point, this doesn't just have to do with injectables, excuse me, doesn't have to do just with memberships and subscriptions. Anything purchasable that's non-surgical through your price estimator can be done. But the person doesn't see the price up front. Notice that. The price is not pointed out anywhere. They first have to log in and subscribe to that. And they, if they have an account, they log into it. They don't have an account, just like before, they have to enter in all their demographic information. Once they've entered their demographic information, this is just to add something to their cart so they can then see the price. Now it's added into their cart and now they can see the price of that membership, $25. If it's Botox, it's 300. If it's you know fillers, maybe a thousand. The point being is that the person has to create that account, add it to their cart, and then if they wanna buy it, then they enter in all their credit card information and they can do it. They can purchase it right through the price estimator. Okay, so great. If they buy it, awesome. You find out you get a new patient, you got some revenue, great. But if they don't buy it, what happens? They've added it to their cart. Well, the same thing that happens to Am on Amazon, when you add something to your cart, what happens? You get an abandoned cart email. Same thing happens here. This particular person, they added the membership to their cart, could have been Botox, could have been filler, whatever. They get an email that says, hey, you left this item in your cart, you can click here to buy it. And if they buy it, they come back to the website, they buy it, great, awesome. But if they don't buy it, that's okay because this same email, the same abandoned cart email that the consumer got, your office staff gets the same email that has the patient's name, the patient's email address, and the patient's phone number. So now you're generating leads for people that wanna check pricing on procedures you offer, but you're also capturing leads on people that are interested in buying something, but don't actually buy it before you weren't getting those leads at all. You were only getting the leads of people who actually bought something. There's way more people. I think we can all agree that the, in the sales funnel, the people that are actually buying something is way fewer than the people that are considering getting something in that sales funnel. We're getting everybody in that sales funnel that's considering buying something, not just the people that are buying something at the bottom. So let me give you a case study. Uh, Steven Weiner, facial plastic surgeon out of Florida. We followed him over the course of about four months and he generated almost $5,300 in online sales through the price estimator on his website. And that was micro needling, it was injectables, it was like all kinds of things, just nothing blatantly surgical. And he generated a ton of money from that. That's awesome, great. But think about what, that, that could have been the end of the story, but because he was using our price estimator, he also generated 95 abandoned card emails. So he's generating the leads on things that he's not even making money from. He's still getting leads out of it. But basically, he's getting leads when he wasn't expected to get leads. So 95 abandoned card emails on top of all the other wish lists that he got of people checking pricing. So really huge that nobody has thought of this abandoned card idea within the cosmetic space or within the aesthetic space. Amazon's been doing it for years, but nobody's thought of it until now, until we've been doing this 
now for quite a while. So we've talked about lead generation at the price estimate. We've talked about the ability to get leads through subscriptions, memberships, and online purchasing, even if they don't purchase it. But then, yes, you can also have online purchasing through your uh, website. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is, before we get to our guest of honor, uh, Dr. Nick Slinkovich, Denver Body Doc, I want to just talk about the email marketing. So obviously, we're generating a ton of leads here. Uh, and email marketing is a part of that. If you already do some email marketing, great. If you don't, this is something else that we offer. Here's uh, one of our doctors, Dr. Michael Kurzman, who uses the price estimator on his website. He's based, he's a dermatologist in Staten Island. Uh, we created this uh, email newsletter for him based on all the leads he's generating. He can just passively build that email database, send out this email newsletter. And this is just a quick example of an email newsletter that we did for him, nice and clean, uh, nice photo of his uh, team. And you can put it whatever you want. We can help you with this each month with each uh, monthly email newsletter. And then at the bottom, of course, is that call to action for Get a Quote Now, where it directs them back to Dr. Kurzman's website. The other thing that's pretty cool about email marketing is that you can see the hotspots. This is an overlay of the hotspots on your email. You look at those different uh, percentages that I'm pointing out right here, that you can see what people are mostly clicking on. If I send out an email newsletter, people are mostly clicking on the Get a Quote Now button in my email newsletter. In this particular case, they liked this photo of his team. They were clicking on that. That brought them back to his website. So no matter what your call to action button is, you can see that data in your email marketing when you work with us. So without further ado, I want to get to our guest, uh, Dr. Slinkovich. He's going to come on screen in just a second here, and we'll be able to hear from him. But he's Denver Body Doc on Instagram. Uh, he's a plastic surgeon at Colorado Plastic Surgery. And he inserted a price estimator into his website at the end of March, uh, and he already has over 200 unique leads uh, from the price estimator on his website. Uh, Nick, are you there? I am there. Jonathan, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. You're coming in loud and clear. Uh, Excellent. So, so anyway, so so you're a plastic surgeon, Colorado plastic surgery. How long have you been in practice now? I don't know. Am I up on screen at all? Uh, I, I don't see your face yet, um, but I can hear you though. Uh, you okay. click on well, webcam. Yeah, I am. I am a plastic surgeon in Denver. Been here for about 16 years out of training, and we have a practice that's you know largely surgical, but we do do ancillary services, and we've been working to get social media to be a a, a source of education for patients. And we um, honestly, I've learned a lot from your presentation here. I really appreciate it. I've I've actually been skeptical about giving out pricing information for a long time because we figure like, well, that's the hook to kind of get them in. Well, we can't tell at consult. And I know you, re you can't tell you until you're consult. And we reviewed that. Uh, I know you reviewed that. But my, um, I've been very impressed with getting a number of leads in. Social media is something where you're educating, you're working out, you know, you're trying to be authentic is, and, and show your real human side. Um, and if you're trying to sell directly, you're a host. People are just going to tune out. They're not going to follow. So you're adding all this value, whether you're demonstrating procedures, you're going through instructions, you're just get, you know giving options, all those things, which has always really been a, the big emphasis for our social media. And when we don't have a, um, the commonest question we get is, what is the cost of X, what you are showing? What's the cost of uh, a treatment, whether it's a, you know, a skincare treatment or a surgical procedure? And in the past, we would just answer it, or oftentimes in our social media stories, we would just post a summary of what the procedure is meant to do and pricing information. And I you know, really appreciate now that this is a way to more or less monetize social media and not monetize for making the sale directly, but monetize in that you're getting that email address and you're getting the contact information. And right. yeah, it's an impressive number of leads. It's, it's uh, inviting us to like really look at our, our plan our approach to responding to those leads because it's a it's a large number to respond to but also for me i'm worried that you know i know instagram is hot as hell a day and like we don't think it's going anywhere but we could get kicked off instagram for the political uh, shutdown culture that you know what plastic surgery is no longer politically acceptable therefore we're right. banning plastic surgery from social media which stranger things have definitely happened and others have been kicked off for innocently having something that was felt to be objectionable you at least have that email address. You've got something that you own. So you own your website, you own your email addresses, and I'm very much looking forward to having that email database and, and appreciate your information on the email marketing. 
Yeah, and you um, I remember because you at one point you did have your prices listed on your website as a static menu, but but yeah, you weren't getting any leads from that. Now now you are, and you're absolutely right. As far as the Google algorithm, the Instagram algorithm, you could lose your following overnight. It's not unheard of. There's plenty of people who talk about getting kicked off Instagram because maybe they showed a nipple or something. And if they have nothing to show for it, then they're screwed. But if you built up this huge email database in the process, you're not left empty handed. Um, I can see you now. You're looking good, man. Looking good. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> since we're actually face to face now, I need to put my COVID protection right. on so I can do this okay. safely. I feel safer already. Um, yeah. well, That's the only reason I wanted to know if I was shown is I could put my mask on. Exactly. Show it off. Well, I also want to show everybody this next screen as I pulled up an example of your website. And one of the things I want to show is, so he's, so you're wondering, like, you know, everybody's probably wondering, how did he get so many uh, email addresses? Gr granted, I'm not guaranteeing, every, guaranteeing everybody get this many leads, but the possibility is there. And I just want to show you some of Dr. Slinkovich or Nick's um, best practices. You see on his website, he's got that get a quote now button, very obvious for people to get to it. Um, and then also, I just want to point out, if you're looking at the uh, price estimator on my website, these different procedures right here, they were like different colors but you can customize the colors for the price estimator on your website to match the colors of your site. So it doesn't look like, it looks like it belongs there. But the other thing I want to point out, and you mentioned social media, is you've done something really smart when it comes to social media that obviously you're putting procedures up there. People are asking about pricing, but what I really like what you did is a lot of people, you know, you realize that there's only one link that you can put in your bio on your Instagram page. And here's, your one link right here. It's a link tree. And for people who don't know about it, and I've got nothing to disclose, I just like the, what, what you're doing. I don't have any investment in link tree. But if you look at the link tree here, this one link, even though you can only have one link in your bio, it take that link takes you a ton of other links. And the one you have at the very top is the get a quote now button. And when people click on that, again, it takes them back to your website, straight back to your price estimator. And then they can look at all the services. And if they want to know how much something costs, then yes, then they have to add it to their uh, price up. They have to add it to their wish list, put in their contact information. They get pricing, you get a lead. Um, but what else have you done as far as social media? I mean, y'all are getting questions all the time about how much things cost through social media right now through Instagram. That's probably the most common DM that we get. I mean, we get DMs on a lot of things, but the most common question that we get is what's the price? Right. And, and then this uh, I hate seeing those. And I more or less have some staff that assist with a lot of that, but they hate having to type in pricing all the time too. Um, you know, so what were some of my fears with doing this? One of them was not wanting to be nailed down to a firm price. And as we were filling out the, the, the build my bot app and building this in, uh, we struggled a little bit with that. I think we got advice from you and others that to just put different options in. So that's what we've done is we put, you see right in the top of the, your screen grab there, yeah. level one, level two. And so I said, you know, you got to give a range. You got to get a, have to high, give a high, low and just put some levels in there so that reality is, is, and some people that makes total sense, right? I mean, if you've got a breast that's down to your abdomen versus a little bit of droopiness and we've got different pricing for a breast lift, that would be helpful. And I really share with you that I don't really care what the pricing we show is. We want it to be high. We don't really want to be the cheap person in town. And I'd rather, I don't necessarily want to be the most expensive, but you want to, you know, you want to charge an appropriate amount. We're professionals. We're giving a, a, a you know, the highest possible service. And so I agree with you. I don't think it's something to shy away from that your price is maybe higher than somebody else. And honestly, for a lot of people, that's actually a feature, not a bug. You know, they, they want to know that they're going to, they're going to get quality service. They're going to be looked after that. The relationship is going to be there, that the staff is on their team, that you're partnered with someone on this journey, kind of hell or high water. You're going to be there afterwards. And it is, um, uh, I don't think it's a problem to show high prices. I think it's right. uh, it, it's necessary. Right, and thanks for bringing that up. As far as the ranges, yeah, we didn't want to do ranges where you like click on facelift and you get this answer back, oh, it's 10 to $20,000, because that's not really helpful to the patient. So yeah, so that's what I recommend to people to stratify it, just like you did. Like we have mommy makeovers, you know, but we have mommy makeover type one, type two, and type three, that all regards to if they need a breast lift, or a breast implant or breast organ lift. And the thing is, just like the way you've stratified these different procedures, level one and level two, the consumer may not know the difference between level and one, level two when they look at it, but they can actually drill down into it and they can read the description if they want. But again, even if they choose the wrong one, they still have to put in their contact information to get that price. You still get their contact information and your office staff can then follow up with them 
and talk to them more about it. I always use the example of a rhinoplasty. If somebody chooses the procedure of a tip rhinoplasty, then your office staff gets that lead, follows up with them, finds out they've had 12 revisions. Then you can have that conversation that, well, this isn't going to be the right price. So that by the time they come in, or maybe they don't come in, maybe they're like nuts and you don't want them to come in uh, and you discourage them from coming in, or they do come in and at least they're not having sticker shock because they're prepared to pay more than just a tip rhinoplasty. So I love how you did that, how you stratified those, uh, those different procedures. Makes a huge difference. Um, the other thing I want to show everybody is that this is something that you may not even have known is available, but in the back end of the Dilmabod provider portal, you can see all your leads. I promise I have not dated a woman in every single one of those states. <laughs> touche, touche. Um, but uh, that's so funny. That, but this is one of the things you can do is you can visually see where all your leads are coming from for either in that current month or over the year. And these are the number of leads you've got this month. This isn't even over the cor course of the year. So you visually can see all the leads you've gotten this month of April in, in the platform, in the Bilmobod uh, backend provider portal. And then you can zoom in and you can see that most of your leads are from Denver. And this is a nice visualization that you can see that you're really touching on all the different areas of Denver. You're getting Aurora and Littleton and Lakewood, Inglewood, you're getting all those areas. And so this kind of gives you some feedback. If there's like a hole in one area, then maybe you can start doing some marketing in that area specifically. But it's really nice feedback that everybody has access to of their, their own leads, I mean. All right, hey, you know, there's some people on the on the call. Can people ask questions or anything? You know, I, one of the things I have found particularly helpful is nailing down the details of how to get virtual consults to run really well. And we're loving it so much that we're gonna, you know, a part of it's a COVID response, but we're probably gonna push all of our consults essentially to virtual consults. And it really is uh, a powerful tool. And I think it's actually a major convenience for patients. And Absolutely. on a lot of levels i think even emotionally sometimes it's hard to walk yourself into a plastic surgeon's office and imagine what you what it actually takes and what someone actually feels to go through that entire process and get into your office and this bypasses that and in some ways i you know i actually when i'm doing my virtual consults and i i know this all looks fancy i'm in my sort of podcast studio office slash now zoom and virtual consult so yeah i've got it set up so that it looks appropriate but i have you know, I say, hey, if we're meeting in person, I'm going to see this. Uh, you're going to see this, and I'm going to see this of you because we're both going to be wearing masks, so we're not even going to see each other's facial expressions. And literally, you're looking straight into the into the camera. They're looking straight into the camera, and the virtual consult process has taken us a bit to get all the kinks ironed out. I'd be happy to go through our approach to that. But are there questions that that anybody can submit about the build my bod or the consultation process or even Absolutely. social? Absolutely. The, uh, if everybody sees the panel over on the right-hand side of their screen, you can definitely ask questions. Now, I'm going to actually be doing a, a presentation, a webinar next Monday with a mentor talking about an ecosystem of virtual consults or an, a, an ecosystem of online services for your office. And one of those things we talk about is first making it possible for them to book online for the appointment and clarifying whether it's FaceTime or Skype, because if they don't have an iPhone, you don't want to be scrambling at the last minute to get their Skype handle. Uh, but yeah, people can book online. And then, yeah, we're doing uh, Skype and FaceTime consults. We're sending them all the paperwork ahead of time. They're filling it out on their computer and emailing it back to us. And that's really our process. What, what are y'all doing? Yeah. Um, so it, I've really wanted to maybe find a solution to have appointments scheduled online. But we, you know, we have highly invested in training you know, true professionals as patient coordinators. And so they're the ones that are reaching out and following up with leads. And, and a couple of years ago, we went to scheduling time with them. So they, they put book 20 minute slots to talk with people and that by having appointments for that, which I would love to be able to have virtually set up, then they get that screening call and a dedicated time and their hit rate with getting in contact with people is much higher than randomly calling back a phone number on a lead, et cetera. Um, with, and that's particularly for inbound coming leads that hasn't missed where we have more than a phone phone number that will be scheduled by our front office. People call us or otherwise reach out to us. We work to schedule that appointment. But they have. So my virtual consult process starts where the, the coordinator at home for them right now and the patient start with a Zoom call. And I don't think it matters. The platform uh, security is an issue and Zoom is not perfect, but there's a HIPAA waiver from the feds right now where they're allowing uh, the fact that not everything is particularly perfect and I'm sure that won't last. But uh, 
I think the screen sharing part and the ability to bring in the coordinator and bring in the patient and separate groups is important features for the video calling for our process. They start that process, maybe 10 to 20 minutes with the patient or speaking with them. Ahead of time, I've gotten their pictures sent to me. We use TouchMD, so they've submitted pictures on TouchMD, the vast majority. Um, and so it's actually pretty uncommon that I'm having to examine them virtually. Uh, now I can, but I haven't found it particularly necessary most of the time. So I have their pictures up. I also remote into my office's computer for Vectra and 3D simulation. And I've set up a series of test patients that have given consent to share their pictures. And I have their 3D simulation. And I have the benefit of having their post-op pictures because they've actually had the surgery. And so for breast surgeries, I have that available as well. So. And then I also have their intake information that's been submitted. So I've read through that. The patient coordinator then chimes me in real quick and silences the other person and says, hey, doc, you're ready to go. Here's this and this. I say, yeah, what are they like? You're going to love them. They lost weight. They're really excited or they give me a tip on what it is. I've already got a picture of their history. I really know them better than they think before I even get on. Then I immediately pop on bright smiling face and mask and then get a chance to work to build that relationship, talk about the procedure, screen share their pictures as necessary, screen share, share simulations and do sizing simulations with them and say, does this, do you like this? Do you like this, et cetera? And at that point they say, you know, I really do. I say, I'm confident we'll be able to get a good size for you. And I think this is, you know, has a lot of similarities to you, et cetera. And answer any questions. And then I uh, say, anything else? No, okay, it was so nice to meet you. And then I'm going to leave you with Alicia, our coordinator, or Sierra, our coordinator. And then I exit the meeting. They're back together. They get presented the quote, which is probably presented, probably typed up while they were sitting there on mute listening to me and listening to our conversation, or they had pre-prepared it. And they go through the quote, book the, book the case, and, and get a deposit. And uh, we again, we've invested a tremendous amount in the professionalism and training of our coordinators. And we have a, a same-day booking rate. Uh, it's always over 80%. And I've had a lot of people say, dude, that's total bullshit. There's no way you have 80% same day booking rate. Reality is for the year of 2019, one coordinator had a 92% same day booking rate and the other one had an 87%. In this modification now in COVID, we're still doing a strong number of consultations by being out and open on social media, acting like we are still in business. And we have uh, still have a, a, always have a close rate same day, meaning they booked the surgery that day and paid a deposit to get on the schedule. So that all happened in one call. Now, a lot went behind it, but I found uh, for the virtual consults, the ability to do that screen share, have your approach down so that you're able to really uh, get a good connection. And I'm now using that as a primary method that I'm gonna get to know you now virtually. And then it's a little bit of a formality when we come in and have you do your pre-op for, for your surgery but I am able to dedicate, and I don't have as many distractions here as I do in the office, just in terms of timing and mindset and where I'm at, it's easier for me to, in some ways, to do it virtually. Yeah, I completely agree with you moving forward that even after the whole COVID crisis, after we're out of the meat of it all, that I have every intention of being mostly a virtual for all my consults. The only people that would need to come in that day are injectables, and the patients that are coming in that day for surgery. That's that's the way we're looking at it moving forward. And it was interesting how you're talking about all the different uh, information that is exchanged ahead of time. You know, you get their paperwork filled out ahead of time, you get their photos ahead of time. It's always interesting to me that when you're going through all these things to make sure everybody had as much information as possible ahead of time, price was never one of the things that you talked about ahead of time. And no, they now, know price ahead of time for sure. And now they know price ahead of time for sure. Um, so I appreciate you uh, you being here with us. I'm just going to uh, kind of go into some conclusions here. And, and this is definitely the time for people to start asking some questions in the panel on the right. And I will read them out loud to everybody and we'll answer those. But I uh, just want to make it clear that you will be able to generate more leads by levering pricing information in exchange for contact information. Everybody wants to know price. No reason not to get somebody's contact information in return. You'll uh, build a huge email database in the good times so that you can use it in the bad times. And then, of course, email marketing, as I've said before, is the least expensive form of paid ad, uh, paid marketing and really a great way to stay in touch with the patient. And you can own your marketing and be in a much better situation as far as weathering future pandemics and recessions. Um, the uh, As far as what we could, what we you need to do now is, aside from asking questions, reach out to me if you're interested in a free online demo. Uh, you can also uh, 
since this is a price transparency talk, we need to let you know how much this costs. But a price estimated that we've talked about all these different features, it's $149 a month, $1,500 a year. If you sign up now, you get an extra 13th month free. Um, and that includes the ability to, um, to showcase things online, to sell things online. Uh, but if you want to do the email marketing service, that's an add-on 750 one-time uh, template creation, $350 a month to help you with the e-blast creation. And then if you actually, uh, if you want to allow things to be uh, sold online, if you want to make things purchasable, that doesn't cost any extra other than the price estimator cost. But if somebody actually buys something online, if there's any transactions that are processed through the price estimator, then we do keep a 5% merchant services fee for that. And then we submit the rest of that to you through PayPal, friends and family. So there's no additional fee to you. So that's the only additional cost if you actually sell something. If you have something available for online and you're getting a ton of abandoned card emails, and nobody's actually buying anything, great. You're getting all those emails, those abandoned card emails, but you're not actually having to pay for any of that um, unless they actually buy something. So if you uh, want to get started, you can actually go to buildmybod.com slash providers. You can actually create an account, log in, and start adding procedures and pricing. We make it as easy as possible. Then your web developer uh, will get, and uh, you'll send your web developer this uh, line of code that we will send you automatically that will allow you to embed the price estimator into your website. Even if it sounds complicated, it really isn't. And then of course, email me if you have any questions, Jonathan at buildmobod.com. You can direct message me <coughs> at real Dr. Bay, R-E-A-L-D-R-B-A-E. You can direct message Dr. Uh, Nick Slinkovich at Denver Body Doc if you have any questions. But also, please, we have a few more minutes. Please ask some questions. And then also, oh, actually, here we have a question. Somebody was asking with the abandoned card emails or the wish list, do the do you send them out multiple times? So we haven't actually done that yet on purpose. We don't want to necessarily feel like we're harassing the patient. So whenever they submit a wish list or an abandoned card email, uh, leave something in their cart, then they get that automated email that I showed you an example of with their name, email, just phone number, the cost of the service. They get that one time, and then that lead is then automatically synced into whatever email marketing database you use. So if you have MailChimp, MyM, a constant contact, we are, we are set up to automatically integrate, sync those leads, are also MyMed leads. We automatically sync all of our leads into MyMed leads, campaign monitor, MailChimp, whatever software you have, and then we are assuming you're gonna be doing some email marketing, so then you can then email those people, and those are some additional touch points. So we purposely do not send out multiple emails to the consumer other than that initial wish list email or that initial abandoned card email, because we know that you're gonna take it from there, we're gonna pass the baton to you, you're gonna sync it into your email marketing database, and you're gonna to continue to email market, and then if you're doing monthly email newsletters, then you're going to have 12 additional touch points with them over the course of a year. So that's why we try not to harass them. So that was that question. Um, the other question is um, the uh, $1,500 for the year. You get a 13th month free that first year. What does that include is the question. It includes the price estimator that goes into your website. It includes, you can put as many procedures and services as you want. You can make as many things that purchasable as you want. You can make as many, um, uh, memberships and subscriptions as you want. You do have to commit to an annual plan to do the uh, subscriptions and memberships because that makes sense because if we're asking the consumer to lock into a year for a uh, subscription, then the doctor has to be on board for a year. Uh, so that's that's uh, one thing as far as that goes. But the uh, price estimators included in the $1,500, the ability to sell things online, the memberships, the uh, subscriptions, uh, you have a listing on buildmybod.com, that's included. You also have a listing on the iPhone app. There's a Build My Bod iPhone app, and that's really meant to be used by your front office staff. So when somebody calls the office asking about pricing, you don't want to say to them, oh, just go to our website to check pricing, because then you might lose them. So what your front office staff does is they pull out their iPhone, or they probably already have their iPhone out. They're already probably playing on social media. But there's an iPhone app where the consumer calls and says, hey, I'm interested in a breast dog. Your front office staff will pull up the iPhone app, pull up your practice within the iPhone app, tap on breast dog, and then they'll say to the consumer, the caller, what's your name, email address, and phone number? I'm going to email you a wish list right now. So you're basically going to submit the wish list on their behalf. That way you have them on the phone, you've got them captured. And a lot of times they'll say, oh, well, I don't, you know, I don't want to give you my name and email address. I just want the price. 
And then what you can do at that point is just blame it on the app and say, well, the app does this automatically, but you have to put in contact information to submit the wish list automatically. We can't do it without that. And every time they relent and they're like, okay, no problem. I'll give you my contact information. You put in their contact information, you click submit, the price will come up on the phone screen. You can tell them the price over the phone, but then they also receive an email with uh, that estimate and you also receive the same email with their contact information. So it's really critical that if they're coming to your website, they use the price estimator to get pricing, you get a lead. If they call the office, use the iPhone app to submit a wish list on their behalf, you get a lead, they get pricing. If they're going well, through social media- Make sure you get, a, you get their, you don't leave it at price. I mean, uh, they're not calling just because they want the price, that's for sure. Exactly. And then that's you the opportunity to schedule them for a, an appointment Absolutely. with your coordinator or to get into a little bit more of a conversation. If they just exactly. want a price, I don't know. Who cares? You know, yeah, yeah. No, no. It's a, send them it's your a website. And get it. yeah. Right. It's a jumping off point to say, hey, are you ready? Would you like to book a consult now? What other questions do you have? Absolutely. It's a perfect segue into getting them uh, to come in for a consultation. And then if it's social media, then if they're DMing you, instead of having to type out the price and explain that it's an estimate, you send them a link. You can actually also send them a direct link. So like, for example, somebody DMs you on the, uh, on Instagram, I'm gonna show you really quickly here. Somebody DMs you on Instagram and says, how much is the price for a brow lift? What you would do is don't just send them the link to your price estimator on your website. Cause then you, that's, it's a clickable link. I mean, that's a, certainly a, a legitimate option. They click on that link, they go to your website, they go to the price estimator but then they have to scroll through to find brow lift. So what you can do instead is next to every single procedure on the price estimator, there's the share icon. It's next to every single procedure. It's automatically there. You don't have to uh, code it or anything. And if they ask for the price of a brow lift, you click on this share icon right here that I'm circling around. You click on that, it'll pop up a link. It's not a very pretty link. It's a pretty long URL, but you just copy that. There's actually a button to say copy and you copy that link, you go back to your DM on Instagram, you paste that link, they click on that, it brings them directly to Browlift, for example, on your price estimator. So there's no scrolling, it's called a direct link. It's just you're removing that frustration of having to scroll through. It's it's really just good customer service now, or what, what goes as good customer service now. And can you generate that both from the website and from the app? Um, the app, no, the app is uh, different. Uh, when people are calling you from the uh, for a price, like over the phone, you're sent, they're telling you what they want, and so you're you're submitting that wish list specifically for that procedure. This is on the webs. Um, this is on for you. Can, they can do this on the website themselves, but this kind of uh, this this process that I'm discussing is specifically for sending them a direct link on social media, so they're not having to scroll through. But how do I? How do yeah. I'm sorry, I think I must have missed a part where how do you That's generate right. that direct link? Yeah, it's right here next to the procedure on the website. Um, so basically, if they're asking you the question in, in Instagram, you will open up an, a window on your phone or wherever to the website, to your website, where your price estimator is. You'll click on that share icon. It'll pop up the URL specific for that procedure. You go back to Instagram and you paste that direct link. So okay, the share so icon like, is next to every single person. Like procedure. right now, I'm logged in on mine. You want to be not logged in or I don't want to be logged in as me or how? Great question. You don't have to log in at all. You can just go to your Denver, your coloradoplasticsurgery.com website, go to your price okay. estimator, click on the direct link next to whatever procedure they're asking about, copy it, and then go back. Now, not to confuse things, but if you are logged into the back end of the provider portal, yes, you can also get the direct link from each procedure in the back end, but that that's I wouldn't recommend that because that's just a lot more clicking. But it is available in the back end also. All righty, what other questions do we have? Those are good questions so far. I kind of took that was a long answer, but anyway, you get a lot for your money. A lot of things are involved in that fifteen hundred dollars per year or the one forty nine per month. Again, the one forty nine per month, you will not be able to use the subscriptions or membership services if you're only paying monthly because it's going to be awkward if you're using that monthly somebody signs up for an annual plan to pay $100 a month for botox and then you your your subscription lapses in a month and they've got another 11 months of this program that they're on so the doctor and the consumer have to both be on an annual plan to make that work all righty what other questions do uh, do any of you have 
Um, as far as can you sell surgical procedures online? We're not going to stop you from doing that. We haven't like made it to where we lock that out. But um, I would not recommend selling surgical procedures online. I mean, you can sell microneedling, Botox fillers, um, and then the consumer comes in. And, uh, oh, and that's the other part of the question. What if they buy fillers online and they come in, they're not a candidate? Well, I've never really seen anybody not be a candidate for something. So if they like, let's say, for example, better example, they buy 20 units of Botox. They come in, they want the Botox in their lips because they don't understand that that's for, they, they want to plump up their lips. And they didn't realize Botox is not the appropriate thing. That's fine. Their money is still good. So if whatever they paid for the Botox to their lips and they really need fillers, you just apply that money towards the filler. It's not a, it's not a big deal. Their money, their dollars are still good. Um, let's see, here's another question. Um, so all those leads I showed you here, uh, just wanted to clarify that they were asking about all of your leads right here. That was just from this month. So it's not even a full month yet. That's not, you can toggle back and forth between for the last 12 months, but you haven't been on that long. You got on the end of March, but these leads right here are just for the month of April. Pretty impressive. Yeah, I'm looking at ramping up that San Francisco lead source. <laughs> so yeah, I hear Littleton's got a lot of uh, complicated, a lot of secondary cases I can do. That's right. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, if there are no other questions, I appreciate everybody that attended. Again, if you want to reach out, uh, you can email me at jonathan at buildmybod.com. You can direct message me on Instagram at real Dr. Bay, or you can just go straight to the website and create your account, log in and start adding procedures. Anyway, Nick, thank you so much for your time. Uh, do you have any other questions since you're a relatively new user? I can, this is a great time to do a little tutorial for you. Well, I typed it in, but nobody answered it. It was, can you make me look like Brad Pitt? <laughs> um, no, I don't. I really appreciate it. I learned a lot. I'm real grateful to be able to do what we do. And thank you for having me on. No problem. Thanks so much, everybody. And you All will right. get a Stay copy safe. of the video in your mail. Take thank care. Bye-bye.